Today we are on board the BMW iX1 eDrive 20 and we are doing the weekend trip test. It's a great way to get a sense of overall efficiency, handling on the motorway and on the smaller country roads, the range, the charging capability. In short, is it a car you can comfortably live with? If you like this video, don't forget to put the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. There will be more on the iX1 later. We are on the road now, about to cross the Thames and to get to the coast of Norfolk, we have something like 220 kilometers. We are going to eat lunch along the way, but we don't want to charge the car today as we are keen to see what the range looks like on this car. We are driving at the speed limit of 110 km on the motorway. Both wind and rain are a big factor of energy consumption on an EV. And on our inbound journey, we have a tailwind at about 15 miles per hour. The road is dry, so reasonably favorable conditions today. But of course, tomorrow we are getting a somewhat strong headwind for the return. So 50 kilometers in, 40 minutes into our trip, we have 182 watt hours per kilometer, that's 3.4 miles per kilowatt hours. Now let's look at the driver's screen, it's excellent, I like it very much. Multiple options for the display, you got your route preview, you've got your speed including the limiter of course, you got your journey data, consumption, distances, you then get the range, your media and radio display with loads of information. Of course, you don't want to be distracted by all of that, but it's super clean, it's great resolution, you know, it's, it's not a must have, but it's very nice. Adaptive regen seems to be the only way to get free wheeling when going down. We can try low regen as well, but it's unclear whether there is more coasting in adaptive or in low regen mode. So we've had good fuel economy so far at 170 watt hours per kilometer with the tailwind, but we're still on the speed limit of 70 miles per hour. Now, by the time we stop for lunch, we're on 168 watt hours per kilometer. After an hour and 30 minutes of drive and 140 kilometer, still good by my standards for a SUV. The car states that we have 232 kilometers of range left. It's predicting we'll arrive with 36% of battery capacity at destination in 88 kilometers, still within 2% of the initial predictions. So that's good. Now let's see how good the sat-nav is and how good is it with speech recognition. Go to Blakeney Point Seals. What is our destination? Blakeney Point Seals. Okay, is that our new destination or... <laughs> Drive down east, then turn left on the river for road.
while there is plenty of acceleration even on the eDrive 20 version I'm not sure what happened there it looked as if the traction control kicked in and it was not what I expected but generally speaking I know there are loads of questions about whether eDrive 20 is enough I would say for any normal people it's going to be more than enough it's a lot of grunts in there now you may be buying a bmw for all the sport mode i don't know but for me it's fantastic it's great we are now off the motorway on the smaller roads and it should be fun here let's see if it consumes more or if it consumes less we're still on 176 watt hours per kilometer after two hours of drive Driving here, you'd think this car was made for the UK roads. We are at 60 miles per hour and it is smooth like butter. It is very nice, very nice indeed. Right, we are at our initial destination. The location is not quite where we want it to be, but we can only blame ourselves for that. We've done three hours of driving, 144 miles, that's 230 kilometers, 169 watt hours per kilometer, or 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour still. That's a very solid result. And we're on 36% battery, which is more or less what was expected at the start. We are now done for day one. We've driven 276 kilometers. We are on 21% battery left. We are still at 170 watt hours per kilometer, which is pretty good. That means the overall range would be 220 miles or 350 kilometers as predicted this morning. We are now on day two. And while you would normally start the day on the full battery, having slow charged overnight at a public charger, Today, we start with just 20% as we want to see how much range there is in the car. We are on the small roads and I must say it feels a bit more stressful than I'd wish. The car is far from small, 4.5 meters long and 1.845 meters wide. These are pretty tiny roads in Norfolk. Then we arrive at our main attraction for the morning. Well, that was great. Now it's time to charge. We've done 165 watt hours per kilometer again this morning. So that's very consistent. And we are down to 5% battery capacity. So we need to rapid charge a bit. I don't think we have enough to go to the Ionity charger where I have the much cheaper rates and the charger is faster. Here, the power is shared, the tariff is high and the cable is short. Then, it's the real rapid charging test at Ionity from 12% to 80%. All is well, it reaches the speed as you'd expect. I've uploaded a separate video, so check that one out. And then it's time to hammer it back to London as we are on a tight schedule. And you remember there is a wind ahead today. Between that and possibly the use of the sport mode, the efficiency is nowhere near what it was yesterday. So after seeing numbers like 250 watt hours per kilometer, we're down to 230 watt hours per kilometer after half an hour. And then with more of the traffic and the speed limits reducing as you get into London, we finish at 209 watt hours per kilometer over the 207 kilometers that we've driven 
since the Ionity charger, and that was about two hours and 30 minutes of drive. So that's still okay. Again, this is an SUV. This is not a very well-shaped car for driving the most efficient way. What's the conclusion from this weekend trip then? Well, it's a great car to drive. It has plenty of power, even on eDrive 20. The infotainment is excellent in my view. The app, the information in general, fantastic. Great cabin, superb insulation from the ad sign noise. The hi-fi stereo, conversely, was not impressive. And there is enough French for most real life living in the UK, I think. However, it's not a small car at all. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed that. Please press that like button and I'll talk to you soon.